Hi, my name is Mrs. Horseman, and today we are going to be talking about ATP and energy. This is kind of a um, preview to our energy and metabolism unit where we'll be talking about photosynthesis and cellular respiration. But first you need to know what ATP is. So today is our focus on that. So how do organisms obtain energy? Well, there's two different classes of organisms. You can either be an autotroph or a heterotroph. We, as humans, are heterotrophs, and that means we can't make our own energy. We have to obtain our energy from the food that we eat, okay? So we don't get our energy from the sun, even though the sun feels good and it warms us up. We're not actually getting energy for our body to do cellular processes. We get that food from, or we get that energy from the food that we eat. So some examples of that would be humans, um, any kind of animal really, so giraffes and cats and dogs and hippos and elephants and mice and snakes and all those other kinds of animals. Autotrophs, auto means self, so autotrophs are organisms that absorb the sun's energy to provide, um, to transit into chemical energy for that organism. Okay, so plants have chloroplast, which allows them to absorb that sunlight, and then eventually they will make some sugar from that. So examples of that would be any kind of plant, anything that's green, basically. Um, there's different kinds of energy. So when we talk about energy, it could include light energy or heat energy, electrical energy, chemical energy, and those are just some examples. And energy can easily be changed from one type of energy into another. And so when we talk about photosynthesis, that's actually what's happening is the plant itself is converting that light energy into a form of chemical energy. Chemical molecules store energy in the bonds between atoms. So this is just a type of atom. I liked the picture a lot, so I chose it. It's not any specific molecule in particular. But if you look here where the arrow is pointing, this line is a bond between this atom and this atom. There's energy stored between those two atoms. Anytime you see a line like that, those are chemical bonds, and those bonds are containing energy. So energy can be released when those bonds are broken. There we go. Um, we specifically are going to be talking about energy in the form of ATP, and if you remember, ATP is a type of nucleic acid. It stands for adenosine triphosphate. Um, it is the form of energy that cells can use. When we say that we provide our cells with energy when we eat things, um, and we talk a lot about the uh, mi mitochondria breaking down glucose to give us that energy. Well, that glucose is still too big. Our cells can't really use it. So that's why it has to break down the glucose, and it breaks it down into ATP, okay, or converts it into ATP. So the energy in this ATP molecule is actually stored in a phosphate bond. So if you look here, we have our adenine, that's our nitrogen base. We have a ribose here, which is a sugar, a type of sugar. And then here, these three little P's are the phosphate groups. And the little lines that are um, representing the bonds between the phosphates are those um, chemical bonds, and that's where the energy is stored. Okay, so the energy from ATP that our cells use is stored in these bonds right here. So when our cell needs to release that energy to use it, they, they break the bond between the first and the second phosphate group. Okay, so ATP releases energy, it releases a phosphate, and now this molecule is now called ADP for adenosine diphosphate. Di means two. All right, so this is adenosine diphosphate. It's now lower on energy because we just broke that bond and released the energy that was stored between those two phosphate groups. Okay, ATP is constantly being used and remade by your cells. It provides all of the energy for all the cell activities that you could possibly think of. The high energy phosphate bonds can be broken to release that energy. So we have our ATP molecule, which is right here. ATP, and we can compare that to like a full battery, okay? It's full of energy, it's fully charged, and when we use that energy, when we break that bond between the phosphates, 
it is can be related to, related to a partially charged battery. There is still some energy that's stored in those bonds, but your cell doesn't want to use all of it, okay? So what's going to happen is, now that it's an ADP molecule and there's some phosphate groups floating around, free phosphates, um, when your cells do things to restore that energy, it's going to pop a phosphate back on so that, that ADP molecule will then be gaining energy and it'll go back to an ATP molecule which would again be like a fully charged battery. So your cell recycles this all the time, okay? ATP can be used for lots of different things. Just a couple of examples, active transport, which we've already talked about, the movement of anything within a cell. Every single time your cell moves anything within the inside of it, and we've talked previously about um, proteins being moved throughout the cell, that takes energy. So it's gonna use ATP to do that. Photosynthesis, in order to make the sugar, your cell has to use some of the ATP. We'll talk, we talked about pro, um, proteins being made and we'll talk later this year about specifically how that happens. That takes energy in the form of ATP. Cellular respiration in order to break down those glucose molecules takes a little ATP but it makes a bunch of it in the end. And any other cellular reaction that can be considered metabolism is going to require energy in the form of ATP. The problem is, cells only have enough ATP to last for a few seconds, so it has to constantly be made, which is why you have to eat to provide your, your body with the molecules that will give it the energy to make ATP molecules. So ATP is really good at transferring energy very well for very short periods of time, but it's not very good at storing it for long periods of time. So that's where glucose comes in handy. Okay, glucose is a organic molecule. Um, its chemical structure is C6H12O6. And all this means is there are six carbons, 12 hydrogens, and six oxygens. Okay, C6H12O6 is glucose. This is a carbohydrate. It is a sugar. Where do plants get glucose from? They make it. They absorb energy from the sunlight and they convert it into a chemical energy which is going to store that long-term energy into a glucose molecule. Animals get their glucose from eating other things, okay? So when you eat a cheeseburger with lettuce and tomatoes and pickles on a great big sesame seed bun, you're getting glucose from everything that you're putting into your mouth because you're getting glucose from the bun there's some glucose stored in the lettuce because lettuce is a plant, the tomato because tomatoes are a plant. If you have ketchup on it, ketchup comes from tomatoes. Pickles came from cu our cucumbers, came from a plant. And the beef that you're eating on that hamburger actually came from a cow. And what do cows eat? Plants. Okay? So all of those have stores of energy in the form of glucose in them. One molecule of glucose can store up to 90 times the amount of chemical energy that a molecule of ATP has. So glucose is very good for short-term energy storage, but it's much longer term in comparison to the ATP molecule. And if you look, this right here is the actual structure of a um, glucose molecule. It's like a um, six-sided ring, and then it has some other... Um, atoms that are coming off of it. It's actually a 3D structure, but we, we tend to draw it as a six-sided ring. All right, so that's all we're going to talk about in terms of ATP today. Um, it's a very brief introduction on energy, but you definitely need to know about ATP before we can start getting into the nitty-gritty about photosynthesis and cell respiration. So I hope that you understood what we were talking about, especially when I said that your cells recycle it, and I kind of um, said it, I referred to it as a battery, so I made an analogy of how ATP is something that we use on an everyday basis in our homes. Um, if you have any questions, please make sure you write them down, and we will be sure to go over it in class.